Oh, thank you, thank you. You really put your heart and soul into it. Thanks so much. This has been wonderful. And now, the highlight of this morning's service. Hmm. I have great pleasure in introducing to all of you who already know him and those who may not as yet know him, Reverend Michael Record, author, playwright, motivational speaker, university lecturer, and I do think he has a little bit of acting in his background. Mm -hmm. He does, he says yes. he does. And most of all, I know him as a diligent seeker after truth. And so it is in that context this morning that he will channel the spirit of truth to inspire us, to bless us, and to allow us to leave here feeling uplifted. Reverend Michael, I invite you to the podium. Thank you very much, Reverend Sonia. That was a splendiferous introduction. <laughs> yes, there is such a word, I gather. Good morning, friends. Greetings to congregants who are here in the sanctuary of this church, the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, in beautiful Kingston, Jamaica. And also greetings to you who are listening to me via the incredible internet. For those who are tuning in for the first time, we are a religious science church and our teaching, religion and philosophy is called Science of Mind. It was founded about a century ago in the United States by Ernest Holmes, and centers are found all around the world. It is a beautiful day here in Kingston, already a bit warm, but there's a bit of a breeze, and I'm happy for that. I'm happy, too, to be here on the podium again, as the face-to-face -face services were f suspended for several weeks because of you know what. Now affirmations written by our congregants are mailed daily from the center. And on Wednesday, the thought of the day, that's what we call our affirmations, was by 17-year-old Shani. She declared, I quote, I am supported by the universal bond, God's love, that connects all life." Unquote. Isn't that a beautiful statement? So beautiful that I'd, I'd like you to repeat it with me. I am supported by the universal bond, God's love, that connects all life. Beautiful, Shani. Lovely. Thank you. Now, Shani has been at the Temple of Light since she was eight or nine. And somewhere along the way, probably in one of the Sunday school classes, she learned that truth, the truth that she stated in her affirmation. It's a sense of mind principle which, unfortunately, is not known or believed by most of the world. And I would say, in a nutshell, that that is the root of humanity's problem. They do not realize their connection with God and their support always by God. You'll see what I mean in this talk that I have titled Seven Concepts That Make Religious Science Unique. 
Shannon may have got the idea in her affirmation that she so poetically expressed directly from an essay by the great American philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Reverend Sonia mentioned him just a while ago. I realized that when I read this slightly tweaked passage by Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. I quote, it is a popular belief that those who practice this science are a class of people who declare that everything is perfect when, as a matter of fact, everything in the objective experience of the race is not perfect and indeed is far from being perfect. The popular idea of the practice of spiritual science this popular idea of the practice of spiritual science is entirely a misconception. Religious scientists are not people who believe that wrong is right, that evil is good, that limitation is freedom, that bondage is liberty, or that sickness is health. They do not claim that our objective experience is an illusion. But they do make the claim that behind the phenomena of human and material existence, behind the slow and persistent process of evolution, there is, as Emerson stated, one mind common to all people. They claim that this mind is perfect and they have access to this mind. I unquote the words of Dr. Ernest Holmes. Let me now expand a bit on Emerson's simple phrase, one mind common to all. We religious scientists claim and this is the first concept that makes us unique as a religion, that there is one mind. Other religions believe humans have minds separate from one another and from God. They believe in a devil with an evil mind, and some believe in many gods. We be don't believe in the devil, and we believe in one God. A number of things flow logically from the concept of one mind. The first is that since we humans think, which is what minds do, then we must be using the one mind to think. Dr. Holmes went on to say that religious scientists believe that the one mind is perfect. That means the one mind is God. There couldn't be God in one part of the universe and a perfect mind which we use in another part. The two must be one and the same. So to repeat, religious science is making the claim that we use God's one perfect mind. Now think about that. We are thinking with God's perfect mind. We're also saying that that mind is infinitely creative. It never stops creating. And that mind, God, created the universe, the seen and unseen, by thinking. The book of Genesis says that God spoke the universe into existence which is pretty much the same thing. One writer in the Bible actually had the insight thousands of years ago to declare that things which are seen come from things which are not seen. The visible comes from the invisible. Now, just as the universe originated with thought, God's thought, all human accomplishments originate in thought too. 
So our creative thinking process is a reflection in microcosm of the divine creative process. In the same way that God created the universe, we create our individual worlds. Same process. Now, having heard that in class, Shani clearly made a big leap in reasoning. She said to herself, and I'm sure I'm paraphrasing, she wouldn't have used these exact words. She said to herself, if God is the mind we used to think to support ourselves in this world, and God is perfect, then God must be loving. Anything that supports us all the time unconditionally is, by definition, loving. And Shani probably went on to say that God is love, which is how the Bible puts it. And then Shani remembered that not only people think, so do cats and dogs and horses and dolphins. So they too must use the one mind. And at that stage, Shani came up with her beautiful declaration, which we heard earlier. I am supported by the universal bond, God's love, that connects all life. It is a logical conclusion. Some of you might be reasoning that religious scientists are saying that God must be the creator of the bad things bad quotes and quotes that happen in our lives. Well, we are saying that spirit is a transcendent, perfect whole that contains and embraces all seeming opposites, what we call bad and what we call good. We teach that God is all there is, and all there is is God. But you may ask, as a mango tree can't bear apples, how could a good, loving God produce evil? Good question. A thinking person's question. Well, let me quickly, categorically say, there is no devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever he's called. And that God gave human beings free will. Now, there's a secret. God gave human beings free will so that we can choose what we experience, whether it be positive or negative. We don't need a devil to tempt us. We're using God's mind. Unfortunately, some people choose the negative, and by negative I mean things that hurt others. But just logically, if God is everywhere, God is omnipresent, there is no place left for heaven or hell, for, for Satan, sorry, or hell. Neither were we born in sin, created in iniquity, as we read someplace, and neither are we inherently sinful, as some religions claim. The belief in our essential goodness, indeed, spiritual perfection, is the second major teaching that makes religious science different from most others. Here's another way of looking at the question of so-called evil. That inspirational passage that Reverend Sonia read earlier was about perception. As all adults come to realize eventually that many things that we perceive as bad are not bad in themselves. And if we change our perception, the things could change. Or maybe they're just not wanted by us at a particular time. Like, for example, rain falling when you want to go to the beach. 
that for you is bad. But rain falling when your plants need watering is good. Same rain. And that ushers in a third. I hope you're keeping count. One, two, three. This is a third important defining religious science principle. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That means by changing your thinking, you can change your life. Which is the name, by the way, of a course that Reverend John, our pastor, teaches in the Tower Street Prison in Kingston, Jamaica. Changing your way of thinking is entirely up to you. And it really means becoming a different person. Now, that's what Jesus means when he tells Nicodemus in the Gospel of St. John, <clears throat> you must be born again if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, by the way, please don't think when I say that your fate is entirely in your hands that I'm saying that you don't need God's help. Remember my starting position. We are always using the one mind to think and decide. God is always supporting us in what we do, whatever we do. Perhaps the most important of religious sciences differentiating concepts is this fourth one, spiritual mind treatment, also called affirmative prayer. This is an amazing tool, and it's a way of praying that is the opposite of the praying of orthodox religions. Their prayers tend to be ones that beg, ask, even beseech. Affirmative prayer essentially gives thanks for what we have already been given. Affirmative prayer is also, in its standard form, a structured step-by-step -step way of praying. We believe the biblical promise, before they ask, I will answer, and it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We believe that infinite good is eternally available, like an ex everlasting buffet with everything you could possibly want to eat. The goodness of God is ready to flow into human existence, into human experience, and we activate this flow by means of prayer. Through affirmative prayer, we increase our consciousness of eternal good flowing into us. Now, potentially, there is nothing that prayer, given the right consciousness, can't do. Let me get scientific for a bit with this editor's description of a book by a renowned author. You'll recognize the name. In The Science of Miracles, the Quantum Language of Healing, Peace, Feeling, and Belief by Greg Braden, we discover that paradigm-shattering revelations that demonstrate why we are not limited by the laws of physics and biology as we know them today, and why our DNA is a code that we can change and upgrade by choice. The implications of these discoveries are vast, powerful, and for some, challenging. They show us, beyond a reasonable doubt, that we can reverse disease redefine aging, create peace between nations, and even change reality, so-called reality itself, through the focused power of belief and heart-based emotions. 
It is these seeming miraculous abilities that create the life-affirming joys in our life that become the realities of our world. They are all based on the same principle. In the first years of the 21st century, scientists have confirmed the existence of a field of energy that connects us with everything everything in our world, given names that range from the quantum hologram and the field to the divine matrix and the mind of God. Research has shown that through the conduits of this energy, the feelings, beliefs, and prayers within us change the world around us." Unquotes. That first part of the description is a real eye-opener. I'm sure you'd agree with me. It, the, the blurb from the editors continues for another couple of sentences, and I'll read them. They show that the teaching is not new. I quote, Interestingly, our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions have offered the same wisdom for over 5,000 years. Both science and ancient traditions agree on a couple of key points regarding this energy field. There is a precise language, and language is in quotes, that it recognizes, unquote. The editors say that that language is the language of our feelings, beliefs, and prayers. It is what we in religious science call our consciousness. Belief in the power of consciousness is a cornerstone of science of mind. The fifth concept making us unique, that belief in the power of what we call consciousness. To elaborate, our consciousness is the sum total of our beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and awareness. Our consciousness determines our success or failure in life. How? Through the law of attraction, the creative God-mind which we use responds to our consciousness, essentially our feelings. And as we are always thinking and feeling, then God, an infinite creative mind, is constantly responding. It can't stop. Let me elaborate a little bit. The way the law of attraction works is that whatever we are feeling is supported and acted upon by the universe's creative forces. So if we are feeling something which we call negative, like hate, for example, then we'll get something negative, something akin to hate. What we are thinking and feeling attracts that which is like itself. The law of attraction, in brief, is like attracts like. So if you want good, you have to have a consciousness of good. If you don't want it, if you don't have it now, you must develop it. Your success in life begins, begins with you. The same principle that brings us freedom, prosperity, and joy also allows us to experience bondage, lack, or misery. Now, Though all thought is creative, the most powerful creative thought, the most powerful creative consciousness, is the consciousness, the thought, at the deeper level of your mind, the subconscious. Dr. Holmes calls it the subjective mind. And that is the part of the mind that the universe most strongly responds to. And Dr. Holmes explains why. It is because our subconscious or subjective mind 
is the section of the mind that is actually a part of universal mind. I know I was talking earlier about one mind. But think of your mind like your body. Your one body has different parts with different functions. So there is your conscious mind. For convenience, we call that one part conscious and the other part subconscious or subjective. And it's a subjective mind that is a part of universal consciousness. We now come to the sixth unique concept. Religious scientists also believe in a practice called visioning. In this practice, spirit guides us instantly and unerringly. The ministers of this church vision maybe eight or nine times a year. Would, would you say about eight or nine times? She's agreeing. On Monday, at our meeting, we visioned on the format and theme of this weekend's practitioner's retreat. After we went through our ritual, including asking for specific questions, we got such beautiful answers that Reverend John remarked on how amazing it was. Previously, he had told us that the North American science of mind practitioners vision before all important events. So visioning is a very important and integral part of religious science. You who are interested in the process should perhaps consult your pastor. It's not something that I have discussed at any length with anyone. So there may be aspects of visioning of which I'm unaware. Talk to your pastors. And finally, here is the seventh concept of the lot. We believe that Christ is not a person, but a principle, a universal presence, the universal image of God that is present in all creation. That is the principle of Christ. Each human individual partakes of the Christ nature to the degree that he or she recognizes the cosmic Christ within and lives out of that revelation. Now Jesus of Nazareth, whom we often call Jesus Christ, as if Christ was a surname, Jesus of Nazareth was a human individual who revealed the Christ nature to the highest degree ever known. It is he who says time and again in the Gospels, it is done unto you as you believe. And he's talking there about deep consciousness and almost echoing the words of Proverbs written hundreds and hundreds of years before Words of Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Note the phrase, in his heart. It's not just superficially. We are talking about, again, that deep consciousness. Friends, please cultivate the correct consciousness and all will be well in your world. Namaste. Namaste.